So just a couple of quick notices. First of all, a few practical things. In terms of fire exits, obviously the exits where you came in, but there's also the door here. Uh, just to the front, you probably see the sign. I can't quite see it, but there's a sign there. Uh, and there's a door if you need to leave. Mind the water if you're going out in the rush. Hopefully we won't have a fire. We've never had a fire before. Okay. Um, the other thing is toilets. Um, so there's the green door with the toilets on the building sort of opposite. So if you go back down the path to War Memorial and then turn right, the, there's a green door in front of you, but there's also a white door on the end of the building there, which is a disabled toilet. And it's inside and it's a bit nicer. Um, warmer so if you want to go into that one that's absolutely fine so the white door the green doors are the toilets and we're very relaxed here um, we'd rather have you here so we want you to feel relaxed so you know if you need to leave at any point or the children we don't mind children noise don't mind them going around and singing or shouting whatever they do but if you have any issues if you've got little there's nobody with any babies that i can see but if you wanted to you're welcome to take them out or keep them in we don't mind um, but you're very welcome and uh how exciting today to have a baptism as well. I'm going to hand over now to uh, Adam. This is Adam. He speaks here. Um, and his, him and his wife Becky are leading the service today, the Easter service, uh, for the bulk of the service. And then we'll have the baptism later on. So I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much indeed, Matt. Good morning. It's Easter Day. It's Easter Day. And our Easter Day service can only start with one song can't it? Thine be the glory, risen, conquering son. Let's stand and sing. <laughs> I don't know about you, 
I don't know about you, but since I got up this morning, I've had uh, WhatsApp messages and Facebook messages and text messages from friends saying, Happy Easter. I've never felt so loved. And that wasn't just from my mum. In the church on Easter Day, we declare that Jesus is risen. And so it's more than just having a happy Easter. One of the things that will be shouted in churches across the world today is this Easter acclamation. So I'm going to say the words in blue, Alleluia, Christ is risen, and I'd love you to shout back at me, He is risen indeed, Alleluia. And we're going to go three times, but we'll have one go just to practice, okay? Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. You can be louder than that. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. And the last time, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. How do we know that? How do we know that? At the front and centre of our service this morning is this reading from Scripture that tells us what happened on that first Easter morning. In Mark's account of this, it says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they could go and anoint him. And very early in the morning... On the first day of the week, they came to the tomb just as the sun was rising. Who is going to roll back the stone from the doorway to the tomb? The ladies asked. But when they got closer, they saw the stone, which was a very large one, had been rolled away. So they went into the tomb and saw a young man in white robes sitting at the right side. And the women were simply astonished. The man said, There is no need to be astonished. Jesus has risen. He is not here. Look, here is the place where they laid him. But go now and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going with you to Galilee and there you will see him just as he told you. So they got out of the tomb, the women did, and ran away. They were trembling with excitement, but they didn't say anything about this to anyone. Let's go back to that Easter acclamation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Becky. Okay, we're going to play a game together now. Don't all look in horror, it'll be okay, I promise. <laughs> if you're upstairs, you're going to miss out. So if you're desperate to join in, you might want to come back down just for this, just to warn you. So hidden around the church, in the back of the chairs, not anywhere near the water, so no one needs to get wet. <laughs> in the back of the chairs, there are some eggs. If we can pop the slide up, Mac. Thank you. <laughs> So, you need to find a complete set of eggs together. There's more than one. Um, once you've found that many eggs in that many colours, you then need to find out what's inside, put it together, and shout when you've got it. Does that make sense? We'll see. Okay, go. <laughs> Have we got it? Yeah? Right, this group think they've worked it out. Do you want to shout it out? Brilliant. He is not here. He is, he is, he, blah, blah, blah. he is not here. He is risen. Hey. That's really hard to say with a Bedford accent when you don't put your H's in the right place. Isn't it? He is not here. He is risen. Right, brilliant. Well done, everybody. So if you didn't find it, there's an egg in the pool. That was always going to happen, wasn't it? <laughs> if you didn't find them all, 
Then a bit like the ladies on that Easter, they went looking for Jesus and he wasn't there. See, so it does all have a plan. We've got a song now. This is on a video. Um, we can stand up. I'm not expecting anybody here to know this. So don't be thinking, oh, I don't know the songs. It's fine. Nobody will. This is one that um, you might want to listen to. It's very earwormy. So you will pick it up very quickly. Okay. This is called Easter Doesn't Stop. Invite e up, uh, v up. I'm going to invite you up here, V, um, to tell us a little bit about yourself and your testimony. I don't know if you've got any sort of scripted or whether I, so I'll ask you some Freestyle. questions. Freestyle. I'm going to ask you some questions and you can tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, how exciting, eh? Yeah. It's, yeah. All these faces. it's lovely to see all this. Oh, and, That's right. And what an honour it is to be here next to you this morning. Oh, that's great. Um, so I know V from. Because you're Bedfordian, I am. born and bred. Yes. Lived in Shortstown all your life. No, not quite. Eighty-four. Eighty-four. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you were a year or two below me, weren't you, at school? Wasn't um, So I know some of your brothers as well. I recognise some faces. <laughs> Morning. Nice to see you. I saw you as soon as you came in. Um, so yeah, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? And uh, yeah. So I'm Velda, but I, I like the name V. Um, Mother over there still calls me Velda. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I, we, we weren't a religious family. We didn't go to church. really wasn't our thing. Apart from um, the Salvation Army used to come on a Friday. Do you remember, Mum? Because um, they picked you up from home. Mum got a few free hours. But they always used to come when Cracker Jack was on. And I never got to watch the end of it. So I never went willingly. Um, so that was kind of my only thing with church. Um, and the subject of, you know, is God real? Never, it was never even a question in my mind, really. I didn't even, 
it wasn't something I really even thought about. So sort of fast forward to 2021, obviously COVID was happening, all things were happening. Um, and our dad lived in Thailand. Um, and we didn't know he was poorly, but he was poorly. And by the time we knew that he was really <coughs> poorly, um, unfortunately Thailand was on the red list. We couldn't get out there to see him. So we didn't get a chance to say goodbye to him or even go to his funeral. So, um, so not, even, not thinking about whether God is real, but I had comfort from the fact that maybe he was in heaven because I always knew that heaven was real. So that's kind of where my cogs started going in my brain because if heaven's real, then God is real. And then I had all these questions I didn't have answers to. So I thought, well, oh. and they were in my mind. And I thought, well, perhaps the best place to come is to church. So one day I walked into this church on a Sunday and was met by the most lovely people. This is such well, so a... Who was that? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody took their time to come and say hello to me, made me feel welcome. Um, and I can't remember what the subject was, but I remember what they were talking about at the time. It was like I was answering a question that I had. And the message I took from that was, you're in the right place. And because this church is so lovely, it was so easy to come back um, every Sunday because it was something to look forward to. It was a, it, this isn't just a church, this isn't a congregation, it's a family. Um, and it's, it was really lovely. And then Max and Nikki started up the home group. Um, and that was when I thought perhaps I should actually invest in a Bible, never actually owned one. Um, we did the home group, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and then we did the Alpha, Alpha course. That's it. And actually, it's the Alpha course, I think, that really answered all my questions. So if any of you here are, have had the same questions that I've got, I would really recommend the Alpha course. Um, it, yeah, it answered everything. And at the end of it, I kind of thought, oh, I think I'm a Christian, you know. Um, so yeah, so this is why I'm here today in front of all my church family, all my family, and all my friends who I very, care about very, very much, to witness me saying I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, I will follow Jesus and through my faith have a relationship with him. Wow. And that's my story. I think we should give you a round of applause because that's quite a brave thing to do. That's, that's great. Thank you for sharing. I'll just say it's a bit about Alpha. It's just prompting me. If anybody's ever interested, we'll happily run another one. And it answers a lot of questions there. It does. looks at a lot of the history as well. Um, so if you're interested, if you just want to come along and just find out a little bit, um, there's no pressure, but you'll be very welcome. Uh, to attend one yeah. that's great i'm good to um in a minute you've got a song and we'll talk about that but i'm yeah. just going to share a verse with you if that's all right yeah. um so the verse that i'm going to share with you is proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and proverbs for those that don't know there's a book in the bible called proverbs it was written by solomon <laughs> king solomon um he was the third king in in israel and judah of the whole land at the time before it was split and um he was King David, so if anybody's ever been to, uh, to Israel, there's lots of sites you can see. He was King David's son, um, Solomon was, and he was known for his wisdom because he prayed to God for his wisdom. And there's some stories in the Bible that um, talk about that outworking. But one of the verses from Proverbs 3, verse 5, um, I'll just say why I'm going to share it with you. And it's one that I've often thought about, and when you're in times of challenge or you're not sure about something or it's inevitable we all go through difficulties in life don't we as well yeah. um, it says trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths um, trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding sometimes when things are difficult or sometimes when it's not difficult, but you're just not sure what to do. Maybe you're looking for another job or, or a situation. And I've always um, trusted in God and everything's always worked out well for me. So uh, I'll share that verse with you. I'll write it in your card so you don't have to remember oh, it. Thank you. Um, but Proverbs 3, verse 5. If you ever want uh, insight, um, you can read that. Um, so your song you chose, um, well, there's a couple of songs you've chosen, yeah. which we've included. And one of them was I Speak Jesus. Yeah. It's a good song. Um, it's, it's a, a good song. song. It's a good catchy song. Um, is there anything particular about it? 
Um, this is one of the first songs I come when I first come. So actually, I think it's probably the second or the third time I come to this church. Um, and that song stuck in my head so much so that when I got home, I put it on me Alexa. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of one that's been with me for yeah. a while, actually. It's a, it's a good song. It's a good song. It talks about speaking the name of Jesus in yeah. every situation, like I've just been talking about. When you've got problems, it talks about speaking his name out yeah, in the street. Yeah, and if you've got and depression and things, yeah. breaking them, change. Yeah, breaking those chains and being free from yeah. those things that get you down. Um, it talks about real peace, and that's the one thing. When you become a Christian, you get that real sense of peace, don't you? Yeah. That um, somebody once described it, it's like having a jigsaw with a bit missing. And it, if you've ever spent hours and hours creating a jigsaw and you've got one piece missing, it's just never the right. But if you find that bit, then you get the whole picture, and that's what life's like um, when you find Jesus, like putting that missing piece in your jigsaw in your life um which i think is a great analogy okay super well, we're going to sing that now i'll let okay, you go and sit thank down you. thank you for sharing I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus
over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that uh, when we declare your name, Lord, you do bring healing and life into every situation. I pray if anybody here this morning is struggling with something difficult, that they will uh, know you ministering into their life, Lord. We pray for them now. And just say that if anybody wants prayer at any time after service or in the days to come, you just come and see us and we'll happily pray for you. As we pray now for everyone here for a blessing at this Easter time, Lord. We pray. Amen. Amen. So that song speaks about speaking the name of Jesus. And in the story, uh, the Easter story, the women are told to go and speak the story, to go and tell people that Jesus isn't there. And the first thing they did was to not tell people. They, they were scared. <laughs> um, it, the reading ends with them saying, oh, I'm not going to tell anybody. Uh, and then today, V shared her story, shared how she, her story of Jesus, she's spoken about Jesus. So we speak about Jesus, and we speak the name of Jesus, which is power, um, over situations. But we can also talk to Jesus, that's what prayer is. Um, we're going to take some time to pray now, um, and we've got an activity for this. So half the congregation go, yay! And half the congregation go, oh! But if I tell you there's chocolate involved, that might sweeten... <laughs> No. It's not that we don't want to pray, it's the fact that we have an activity. I don't want to do an activity. It involves chocolate, so it's on a winner. So what we're going to do, we've got some mini eggs. Um, I've got one packet that's only been open for me to check the colour, okay? That's all I did. I may have tried one. <laughs> uh, so the different coloured eggs are going to give you something to pray about. And it's not going to be like potluck, I've got to put my hand in, and oh, I've got an orange, so I must be really guilty, God wants me to say sorry. It's going to be, you can choose what it is that you want to pray about. Um, so we're going to have the bag, you can choose a colour, and then um, together in your group where you are, you can either pray silently in your head, or if you're comfortable to pray out loud, you can do that, that's fine, um, welcomed. Uh, it just needs to be one line, so it could be, uh, uh, fa Heavenly Father, please bless V on this special day. Amen. That might be it. It might be, uh, oh, God, I'm really sorry that this morning I argued with my husband. I didn't, actually. We didn't. <laughs> we didn't. Uh, but it might, it could just be a one-line prayer, okay? Um, so choose your colour egg, and then together in your group you can pray, okay? And then I will close our time in prayer. So I'm going to bring them around. You need to get together with people fairly close to you. So do you want to pass... So the eggs are now on the move. They're a bit depleted over this side, so if you have spare, you might want to pass your bag this way. I forgot I'd got to send one upstairs. <laughs> Okay, so when you've got your egg, you can uh, get together in your groups and you can pray either silently or praying out loud. That's absolutely brilliant. 
You can eat them if you're really holy and say extra prayers. <laughs> You can finish them, it's okay. You can just carry on eating them. It's all good. If you've ended up with extra chocolates, you can finish them, it's okay. Let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, this special Easter Sunday. We thank you that you are the God who answers prayer. And Jesus, we thank you that there is power in your name. And so we bring all our prayers to you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We've got another song for you now, which is another sit and listen to, sing along if you like. Uh, This is called This Is Our God, uh, which speaks of the power of God. Those walls are rubble now. 
risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The man in white, standing or sitting where Jesus' body was, said to the women, There is no need to be astonished. He has risen. He is not here. Look, see the place where they laid him. But go now and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him, just as he told you. We're going to look at what Easter is all about. So as we do that, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, through the spoken word and the written word, may we this Easter day encounter Jesus Christ, who is your living word. Amen. I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. No, 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 no. I am. I'm so excited. When I was preaching somewhere, because as, as Matt said, I have the privilege of going and preaching in a number of different churches across Bedfordshire. And last Sunday, I was saying that on Palm Sunday, when we remember Jesus coming into Jerusalem, that when I was here on Easter Day, I needed to be excited. And so I am. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. No, 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 no. I'm sure you all remember the Pointer Sister song, and indeed, that's now your earwormy song for your lunch. But I am excited, because it's Easter Day. It's Easter Day. Now, I, as I say, have the privilege of preaching in this church, in this fellowship, and it's been great to get to know you over the last year or so, but on, I preach here on the second Sunday of the month, and today is the second Sunday of the month, so it was that sense by which I knew that I was going to be preaching on Easter Day, and it was pr a privilege to be able to work with Becky, my wife, in putting this service together. But I have the job of coming and talking to you on Easter Day, and I suddenly thought, what do I say? What do I say? And then I was reminded of the line of David Horton in The Vicar of Dibley. David Horton says to Geraldine, the vicar, Easter and Christmas are like the keynote speeches of the party conference, so you've got to get them right. And so over the last 24 hours, as I've been thinking about what to say here this morning, David Horton's words about the fact that this is the keynote speech of the party conference have been going through my mind. But the good news is that unlike some politicians that have to give their keynote party conference speech, I've got good news to share this morning. Jesus is risen. I don't have to talk about the cost of living crisis or anything else. I speak Jesus because he is risen. But it has been a bit of a hairy week for Jesus this week. We shouted Hosanna last Sunday in our churches when we shouted, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. But as you journey through what we've just come out of Holy Week, Jesus said some very challenging things to his disciples. He said that the temple would be fall down and be rebuilt in three days. He wept over the city of Jerusalem and said, bad things are going to happen here. On Thursday, the night before Jesus died, because we remind, remember he died on Good Friday, Jesus prayed that his disciples would go and bear fruit. Go and bear fruit and tell other people about him. But he also in that same prayer said that they'd suffer, that they'd suffer for being of him. But this is Easter day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. And we know that, don't we, friends? Because 
the man in the white robe said to the women at the tomb, he is not here. So there is a need to celebrate that. When I woke up this morning, I checked my weather app. I was up at about 4.30 this morning because we had a, a dawn service here uh, just after 6. I looked at the uh, weather app and it said today is going to be the hottest day of the year so far. And it has been hot. I've taken off my tie. I've taken off my tie because it's hot. Now, Becky said, didn't she, just a minute ago, not only have we not argued today, Becky gave me this, an Easter egg, because she knows that I love cream eggs. I love cream eggs. So probably just after 12 o'clock, that will be gone. But I'm look and I'm looking forward to eating it. But a week last Saturday, I went and bought some mini eggs from Tesco's in Shortstown. I went and bought some mini eggs. And because we got back from a day in London, I didn't open them. I bought them, but I didn't open them. So last Sunday morning, I went to Caddington Baptist Church, just outside of Luton. And I asked the fellowship at Caddington, should I eat them? this morning and they said no one of the people there said adam you're starting to lose weight keep going don't eat them now somebody else in that service said you can't open them and i said why not and they said because you're gonna have to share them but i've lost them where are they because all I can see is the cream egg. Oh, there they are. You stole them from me. You've stolen my mini eggs. Kezia, can you come and bring them to dad? Without falling in the pool. Brilliant. You can see that they've been ripped. I've been tempted to eat the Easter eggs over the course of this week. But I haven't because it isn't yet Easter. But now, it is. So I'm going to eat one. Delicious. So, I've got my Easter eggs. Who else got Easter eggs today? Put your hand up if you've had an Easter egg this morning. I know Tony had two eggs just before coming to the dawn service. You ate two Easter eggs, didn't you, Tony? Two Easter eggs, two of them. Two mini eggs. There was me thinking you'd eaten two of those before breakfast this morning. Who else had Easter eggs? Put your hand up if you had an Easter egg. Kezia had an Easter egg. Anybody else? Isaac? Margaret? I think so, but we haven't seen it. You think so? In anticipation. What do you think you're getting, Matt? You want any, so, so basically, any chocolate will be good for you today. We've got our Easter eggs, or I hope many of us have. So that's right. But David Horton said, didn't he, to Geraldine in the Vicar of Dibley, this is the keynote address of the party conference. And so really, despite the fact that it's hot, I probably ought to uh, put a tie on and look a little bit smarter. I mean, I'm wearing my designer suit for you this morning, Matt Allen. Matt Allen, I'm wearing my Matt Allen suit this morning. But what tie do I need to wear as we come towards the end of the service? Do I need to wear my red tie? My red tie that symbolises the colour of Jesus' blood as he hung on the cross. Is that the tie that I should wear that reminds me of Easter. Should I, should I finish the service wearing my black tie? Because it was dark early on the Sunday morning when the women went to visit the tomb. It was dark, it says that in the reading. Shall I wear my purple one? 
Because when Jesus went before Pilate on Good Friday, they put on him a purple robe. So maybe that's the colour of Easter. Maybe I should wear the blue tie. Because in a minute, Tony is going to baptise V in the baptistry. So the blue tie representing the water, the water of baptism, the fact that we can be cleansed. Maybe I need to wear the silver tie. Because on that Easter morning, there were guards, it says in the Bible, there were guards looking after the tomb to make sure that Jesus' body wasn't stolen. There's a great picture doing the rounds on Facebook today about the fact that there's the two guards sleeping outside the tomb on that Easter morning. And one guard is talking to the other guard and it says, what do you mean you weren't the one that said good morning to me at the empty tomb? So what tie should I wear? Actually, I'm going to wear this one. It's a yellow one. Because for me, this is the colour of Easter. This is the colour of Easter. Because Jesus is alive. He is alive. Gold, symbolising the fact that he is risen. But he is not just a risen man. He is a risen king. And so kings wear gold. The colours of Easter. Many millions of people around the world today will be celebrating the fact that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Luke, well, Father Luke, if you want to be proper. Father Luke, at a service last night, threw water at me. Not as much as is in the baptistry, but he threw water at me to remind me, and along with many others who are gathering in church, of our baptism. Easter is a great day for us to be reminded of our baptism. But it's also good not just to be reminded, but also to celebrate baptism. And so it is a real delight on this Easter morning. For us to be together, it's good to see new people in church coming to witness V being baptised. V sharing about how she's come to know that risen Christ, that risen King in her own life. And how she wants that continued renewal of his transforming power. If I had time and I wasn't going to eat into Tony's time, I'd tell you what baptism is all about. But he is going to tell us all about what baptism is in a minute. But baptism is that significant step forward that we make in our Christian life to say yes to Jesus. That song that we've just had, this is our God. This is our God. This is who he is. He saved us. Who was the one who brought, broke from the grave? He did. He did. That's what we are celebrating. Jesus, not merely just a man, but God. And so if you are a Christian here in church this morning, let's shout. Let's shout about this message of Easter. Let's not be ashamed. The women at the tomb were terrified. That's what the reading says. But they go on to tell the disciples and Peter about what they'd witnessed. And this is why we are sitting here in church this morning, because that message went out in obedience. So if we are a Christian, Easter is a great time for us to shout the name of Jesus, to speak the name of Jesus, so that other people may come and have an encounter with him. But whether we're a Christian or whether we're not, Easter is a good time for each of us to assess the claim that Christ makes, that he is risen, that he wants to forgive you from your sin. 
So this morning, I want to ask you, where are you at? Do you know the risen Christ? The risen Christ that calls me to wear this lovely, lovely gold tie on this Easter day. Maybe for some of us, we need to say a big yes. This Easter day, we need to not be ashamed. And we need to say to Jesus, I am all in. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and I am all in. But maybe for some of us, Easter is something that you've heard about but you've never really explored. So you're not a big yes. You're not shouting the name of Jesus. You're maybe whispering the name of Jesus. And so on this Easter day, I want to invite some of you to say that small yes, to say, I believe it. There's been some great research done in the last couple of months that says that 43% of people in this country believe in the resurrection of Jesus, that believe that he rose from the dead. There's only 6% of people going to church on a Sunday. So for some of us, maybe that small step, that small yes that we need to say today it's beginning to just start thinking a little bit more about this Jesus. Maybe for some of us, actually it's not a big yes, it's not a small yes, it's a healthy maybe. And why do I say healthy maybe? I say healthy maybe because actually, do you know what? Maybe this is the first time, the first real moment where you've stopped and being in church on Easter Day and you're thinking, do you know what, I want to maybe explore a little bit further, a bit like what Matt talked about, about maybe coming on an alpha course like V did. But I want to just start making baby steps, baby steps, not to be antagonistic. So not every time I hear something about Jesus, I suddenly go, can't be true. Actually, I want to put that doubt, I want to put that natural inclination that I have to say, I can't believe in this, to one side and take that step on that healthy maybe journey. I have the privilege, as I've said just a few minutes ago, of going around churches across this county and indeed across the country, going out and sharing the message of Jesus. And I can tell you this, for anybody who is coming into this building this morning for the first time, Cotton End Baptist Church is a church that welcomes people, welcomes people who are on that healthy maybe journey. Next week, Tony is going to be speaking here about the continuation of what Easter continues to mean because Easter isn't just one day. It doesn't finish at midnight tonight. We need to continue to explore what it means because it goes on in the Bible to talk about what happens after Jesus' resurrection, the encounters that he had. So, you know... You're invited not just to be here this week, but next week too. On the first Sunday of the month, we have messy church here. We have stepping stones because actually that invitation of the big yes, the small yes, and the healthy maybe is not just limited to adults. It's limited to everybody. That invitation, that Easter joy is for all of us. So how are we going to respond this Easter day? I just want to pray for us and then I'm going to shout the Easter acclamation one more time. Then we're going to sing Waymaker. Then Tony's going to come and take us forward in the baptism. But let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come together this morning in this place. We thank you, Father, that you are the one who rose from the dead. We thank you that we can indeed speak and shout Jesus. For each of us this morning, Father, who are gathered here in this building, who know and love you, give us boldness to go out and to continue to witness to that resurrection faith. For those of us that maybe need to just have that confidence to speak and shout about you because we know it and we are all in, but sometimes we don't demonstrate that in our lives or what we say to people. Help us today, Lord, to say that we are all in. We want to say that you are risen. You are risen indeed. For some of us, Lord, this Easter day is the day when 
We just need to maybe start to make that whispering small yes. That whispering small yes to say, I want to get to know a little bit more. So Father, help us. Help those of us that say, yes, I believe, but I need help. Help us, Lord, to find a place where we can meet with you. Help us to find our place in the life of the body of Christ. For those of us for whom this is a healthy maybe day, when actually on this Easter day, you're calling us to just put to one side our natural inclinations, our natural dispositions to always say no, that Christian message isn't possible. Help us this day to again find ways to maybe look at your word, to have conversations with other believers. But Lord, help us make this the day when we say that we want to make that healthy maybe step. Father, we thank you for the message of Easter. May we go into the rest of this day, go into the rest of this day, knowing that you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's stand together and sing Waymaker. Oh, you're going to say no, Matt, aren't you? Let's sing Waymaker. It's one of the ones that V picked, so we should sing it.
darkness, my God, that is who you are. A way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Please be seated. Now we're going to do something quite scary. We are going to carefully let the children come and sit around there so that they can see what's going on. Okay? Please. We've got a lifeguard on. <laughs> Just sit right round there, not too close to the edge. Because we want you all to see this, this baptism. So what is baptism? What it's all about? Uh, there's a number of things. One of the things is, we remember the time when Jesus was baptised. He was about 30 years old or so, and he was baptised in the River Jordan by John the Baptist. And as he was in the water... Uh, a dove came like the Holy Spirit and he heard the voice of God from he heaven say this, you are my son in whom I am well pleased, Jesus, the son of God. And one of the things I want V to experience today is just the knowledge that he says, V, you are my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. When we believe in Jesus, we're able to become children of God. What we've got here is a pool, and it's a sort of a demonstration. It's a bit like a grave. And um, so one of the things we display here is that we believe that Jesus died, that he was buried, and he came back to life again. So we demonstrate that in our baptism. Why? Why did Jesus die? Jesus died the perfect son of God in our place so that by his death we can have life. And so we're demonstrating uh, the gospel there. We, we had the school come over the other day just to have a look round and learn about Easter. And this little lad comes up to me and he said, what's a hot cross bun? And I explained, well, this is a sort of current bun with a cross on, to remind us about the cross. I said, have you ever had one? He said, no, I've never had a hot cross bun. I said, why is that? Uh, because I'm a Muslim. And, of course, because it was a school event, there was a limit to what I could say, but I thought to myself, it's so sad that in the Quran it says that Jesus didn't die. And yet history proves that indeed he did. It was his death that was absolutely crucial to our life. So we demonstrate the death we believe in, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And as V goes into the water, she's declaring to us that she's come to this point, she's had the Alpha course, she's heard all about it, and looking back on her experience on the Alpha course, she has realised that Jesus has died for her to give her forgiveness of sins, and that she has a new life. The other thing, it, it, it's a demonstration of what V is doing. She's demonstrating that now I'm dead to my old life, and we all had an old life when we were looking after ourselves and we were number one, and we're dead to that. We're coming up and we live in a new life of relationship with Jesus, of following Jesus, and living for him. So it's that demonstration as well. And it, there's something else. Uh, as well as we go down into the water and come up out of the water it demonstrates that one day we will all die on my dad's gravestone I've got these words written he's not here he's risen yeah it was the words of Jesus but up in Bedford there's a grave my dad's old body is laying there. But the Bible says he is with Jesus. And so one of the things we demonstrate here is we believe that we receive eternal life 
death beyond the grave. There will be a day when we raise up from the grave and we'll be with Jesus and all those that love him forever. One of the important things here is to give V an opportunity. She's already spoken to say what um, she has come to believe. It says in, in Romans chapter 10, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so as we go into the water, I'll be asking V, uh, just one question, do you confess Jesus as your Saviour and Lord, and she'll be able to say that as well. So Matt, Matt and I are going to go into the water and then V can come in afterwards. Say after me, I confess Jesus as my Saviour and Lord. I confess Jesus as my Saviour and Lord. Velda Damon, on your confession of faith in Jesus, I baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for Velda. We pray that your Holy Spirit will fill her all over again and she'll have that new experience of your life within her. I pray from this day forward she'll continue to follow you, uh, to be fearful, for, uh, fearless in following you and speak in the name of Jesus into every area of, our, uh, of her life. We pray for her home, for her family, for her brothers and sisters, that they will know the name of Jesus also. And they'll find the peace and the life and the forgiveness that only you bring. Just anoint her now with your Holy Spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And as we... We're going to sing, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to sing the greatest day in history. If you come back to your seats, folks.
Don't sit down. Stand up. Don't sit down. Stand up. We're coming towards the end of our time together this morning. And just before we uh, come and uh, make our way out, just to say thank you so much for joining us on this Easter morning. I pray that each of you will have encountered something of Jesus' love for you as we celebrated this morning the greatest day in history because that's what Jesus rising from the dead is. It's the greatest day in history. So after the service, you're welcome to make your way over to the, the hall and there will be uh, refreshments there and it'll be an opportunity to talk to, to one another. But if this morning you've got, got that think it feeling in your your yourself that says do you know what? I want to go and have a chat to somebody about what it means to follow Jesus either as a big yes or a small yes or even just to start that journey as a healthy maybe then come and speak to myself or to Matt or to Tony we'd love to talk to you hallelujah Christ is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah hallelujah Christ is risen And one last time, let's raise the roof. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make each and every one of us gathered here in church this morning perfect in every good work to do his will, working in him, that which is well pleasing in his sight and may we know the blessing of god father son and holy spirit may he remain with us may he remain with our families may he remain with all those for whom we pray and particularly today may he remain with thee as she steps forward into this new life in christ hallelujah christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. happy easter i'm off to eat my mini eggs